Hey there, Tom Oje back with a few more Illustrator tutorials. This time we're going to be looking at, um, well, we're still going to be looking at working very precisely in Illustrator, but we're going to be doing that in the context of infographics. Uh, at Zeitgeist, we use uh, infographics as a communication tool when we're doing a series of logo or uh, icon designs for software for customers, and uh, the infographics are sort of the first step in the, the, the design process, just confirming um, the concepts that go behind the icons that I'm getting selected. It's really important that we work really precisely and that we keep our artwork extremely simple when we're doing infographics. That way we're sure that the icons themselves won't become overly complex and they're not fit within the required pixel dimensions. Uh, so let's look at some techniques to working precisely. Here's a really simple infographic here, uh, just sort of a mouse on a target, just representing a click or representing a mouse on target action. Um, and so it's very, very simple, but we want to make sure that everything is done uh, proportionally. So if you look at the concentric circles in the middle, I'm just going to remove the arrow from this for a second. If you look at the concentric circles in the middle, you're going to see that uh, these, they all look very harmonious because the widths from the black to the white to the cer central circle are all, they all correspond. Um, so let's just take a look at a couple of techniques we can use to do that. So I'm just going to delete all these circles and start afresh with a brand new circle and we go, away we go. So as always, whenever we're working in Illustrator, the first thing we're going to do, go to the view menu and we want to make sure that show bounding box is turned off. The show bounding box is evil. Evil. So we need to turn that off. Remember, whenever you need the bounding box back, you can just pop over here to the free transform tool, or what I call the everything tool, because the hotkey is E. It's easy to remember. And that'll bring the bounding box back te temporarily. But we don't want the bounding box in our face. That's going to just distract us. The other thing that we're going to have here under the view menu is the site smart guides pretty much always turned on. So let's make sure that's happening right now. Okay, I've created a new document and uh, the dimensions 500 by 500 points. If you're following along, you might as well use those same dimensions just so that your measurements will match up with mine because we, yes, we will be using measurements at least in the first part of this example. So we're going to start off by moving the mouse to the very center. With Smart Guides turned on, we get a little uh, highlight that tells us when we're, we've hit the center of our document or thereabouts. And we're going to create an ellipse. Um, we're going to draw it from the center, so we want to hold the Option or the Alt key on the PC, or the Option on the Mac, and the Shift key, and then drag outward. So let's do that. Option, Shift, Drag. doesn't really matter how big you make this, because we're going to override that in just a minute. Um, because we want to work precisely, in this particular case, we want to have circles that are kind of concentric, but at the same time also equidistant from each other. So we're going to just need to pick a number. And in this case, uh, we found that 100 pixels by 100 pixels works really well. Keep your units of measurement simple. Don't go with like 77.5 pixels, because that's going to make the math even harder. And if you're like me and math challenged, you want to keep things absolutely simple. So 100 pixels sounds like a really nice round number and easy to work with. I'm just going to use the transform palette over here, which you might also be able to access under the view menu by going to view, uh, sorry, the window menu, window, transform. Uh, I'm just going to access it here, and I'm going to set my width to exactly 100 pixels, or 100 point. In this case, it makes no difference. 100 point, 100 point. Make sure the width and the height are the same. Alternatively, you can just turn the lock icon on, and that will sort of lock the proportions. And there we've got ourselves a circle that's 100 point by 100 point. So I'm going to do this icon or this infographic in two ways. I'm going to actually redo it a second time. Um, so there's a couple different ways to approach it, and we can talk about the pros and cons, but just basically learn both techniques, and you'll be that much better off. Uh, so the first one, we're just going to draw some concentric circles. So if this one's 100 point, the, c the distance from the center to the outer edge is going to be 50 point. So if we want to make keep this looking really harmonious, the next circle should be out by another 50 pixels from that side and another 50 pixels on the other side, so that makes it uh, 100 points more, so it's going to be a total of 200 points. So we're just going to move our mouse to the center of the circle again, and with the ellipse tool still selected, holding down the option key, and then we just click. We don't even drag, we just click, and by having the option key down when you do that, it's going to click out from the center, and we're going to also going to get the um, ellipse dialog box that allows us to now specify the exact width and height. So we're adding 50 pixels to the to either side, which gives us a total of 100 pixels more than the original size, which was 100 pixels, so that gives us 200 pixels. Confused yet? Good. There we go. 
All right, so now that's our, outer, our, our second circle, which actually want to be white in this case. And uh, of course, we want to make sure that we're selecting the uh, fill, set the fill to white. Now, obviously, it's in front of the other circle, so we'll need to send it to the back. All right, that's our second circle. Our third circle will be the outer circle, and again, moving the, to the center of this, of the cent center of the circles. Option click with the ellipse tool still selected, and this time it's going to be 300 points. And you can see that I'm being stupid by not turning this lock on, making me type twice as much. All right, there it is. Set that to black. Send it to the back. Giddy up. All right, so now we've got three concentric circles. This one's filled in white. Uh, in certain circumstances, if you're doing a logo, for example, you might want this to be hollow or see-through, in which case you'd turn this into a compound path by simply selecting this circle, that circle, and choosing Object Compound Path Make or Control-8, Command-8, and that makes that hollow, just to show you that it is actually hollow. Let's just take a box, fill it, and send it to the back. You can see it's see-through. Okay, no big deal. The next thing we want to do is we want to create that arrowhead. Um, the arrowhead can be created a number of different ways. Actually, there's a million different ways to create an arrowhead. In this case, I'd really like the arrowhead to line up with the outer edge of the circle. Again, working precisely, trying to create something that's as aesthetic as possible without being terribly uh, complicated. Let's just let's just use the dimensions of the circle as our guides, and that's going to guarantee that the whole result ends up being very harmonious and aesthetic. So we're going to start in the center with the pen tool, and um, Let's just reset our colors here so that we don't get too crazy. All right, I'm just going to start with a black out oh, black uh, circ uh, black fill. Start in the center. Click. Move our mouse to the outer edge. As you can see, because we have smart guys turned on, as I move the mouse close to the path, I get a little highlight that shows up. So we're just going to click anywhere on the edge of the path, I'm trying to eyeball it at this point, but making sure that it does intersect with the path. And then we come in just a little bit. I'm also going in and up at the same time. Just so I'm trying to look at this mouse over mouse cursor up here and trying to sort of match that a little bit. We are doing this perfectly vertically though, up and down. We'll rotate it afterwards. It's going to make our life a lot easier if we just work straight up and down to begin with. And then once you've done those four points here, we're going to just stop and we're going to mirror this thing. So there's no need to continue drawing. We're going to have to switch to the selection tool. So click to your selection tool and select the arrow. This is an important step because we're going to use the mirror tool next. And if you mirror something uh, when you've just got a single point selected, in other words, the last point that we just drew with the pen tool selected, it'll only mirror that point. That's not really going to help us. We need to mirror the whole arrow. So we've grabbed the selection tool or the move tool, pressing V on the keyboard, and then just click on any of the points to select them. You'll see them all filled in solid. Okay, now we're ready to select the mirror tool. O on your keyboard grabs the mirror tool, and we want to mirror vertically across the vertical axis. So it's actually we're mirroring horizontally but across the vertical axis. So we're going to move our mouse to the center point again. Once again, we're moving right to the center point. It's going to say anchor because we're hovering over top of an anchor point. We're going to hold down the option key with the mirror tool selected. The option key, you can see, notice the cursor's got three little dots on it. That's going to tell us that a dialog box will ensue as soon as we click the button. So that's what we're going to do. Option click on top of that anchor point, that's going to bring up the dialog box. Notice that um, right now it's just flipped it, it hasn't left the original behind, so it's really important that we don't press the default button, which is the OK button, we're going to press the copy button. Uh, make sure vertical is selected, you can turn preview on if you like, and then hit copy. Alright, so that creates the second half of the arrow. Now you can see that the fill isn't working quite right at the moment because the arrow is actually two separate pieces. It's they're separated. So what we want to make sure that we do is we're going to join these guys up and then we'll adjust it if we need to. Uh, now here's a little trick. For joining something up what we normally need to do is we need to select the two points that we want to join and there's two points here. There's one that belongs to this shape and one that belongs to that shape. We want to join those two up and turn them into a single point. So you gotta select them both. Well of course even if we use the direct select tool selecting one it's only going to select the first one on top. We can't then select the next one below that. The way we want to do it is we want to just sort of draw a box around the two things and select them like that. Unfortunately, that's going to select all these other shapes because they all share a center point. So we need to find a way to isolate just the shapes that we want to join. Luckily, that's pretty easy to do. Here's a trick. Select them both by holding down the shift key and clicking on them both in sequence. And then group them. Control G gives them a group. Now the only reason we're grouping them is not to join them up, but grouping them so that we can then double click on the shape to enter into isolation mode. Double click, 
isolation mode allows us to now only work on these shapes. The other guys get sort of temporarily grayed out and say that they're not accessible at this time. So if I were to press Control A or Command A on the Mac to select all, that's only going to actually select just these two shapes, just to show you how isolation mode works. All right, so I've deselected them. Now I'm going to switch over here to the direct selection tool, uh, the white arrow tool, and I'm going to draw a little box around those areas. You can't really see that very well, can you? I'm just going to do it again. Oh, I exited isolation mode because my mouse is kind of messed up right now. So let's just give it another shot. All right. There we go. And there we go. I've drawn a box around those two points. You can tell the two points are selected. I'm going to just give it a test by clicking and dragging. And, oh, that didn't actually work the way I expected. And once again, my mouse just popped me out of isolation mode. So let's just give me a second here. Some of the haters are probably saying, get a good mouse. I do have actually a good mouse. It just suddenly decided to go in the fritz at about 3 o'clock this afternoon. And here I am trying to write a tutorial. Okay, so I've selected both of those points. You're going to have to take my word for it. And now I'm going to press Command-J, which is the Join button. That's going to then join those two shapes up. Now here's a really important trick if you're joining things. You really want to make sure that you joined two points into one. We want to make sure there's really only one point there. So I'm going to deselect my shape. Uh, which always turns into a double click with this mouse, apparently. Deselect the shape, and then I'm going to come in here and click on that point. And if I have two points, it's going to pull them apart. And I just sort of move around to verify that, in fact, I only have one point. So obviously I'm going to undo, because I don't want that crazy deformed arrow. And we're back to a single point. So that's good. Now, the arrow is actually not quite complete. Believe it or not, there's these two guys need to be joined up as well. Uh, we only do that in case that we uh, ever want to apply a stroke to this arrow. We want to make sure that we're joining those up properly. So Command-J or Control-J on the PC, and away we go. So now we can pop out of isolation mode, which is I've been doing all this tutorial. And you can just by double-clicking anywhere uh, outside of the shape or by clicking the back button at the top of your screen. And then, just to be on the safe side, select this arrow. It's actually grouped. still remembers that it's grouped, so you're going to want to press Command-Shift-G or Control-Shift-G or just go to the object menu and choose Ungroup. All right, so we're back to the ungrouped arrow. Now, just take a look. If you're not happy with the shape of your arrow, then uh, we have an opportunity to adjust it. For example, if you find that the stem is too wide or too thin, uh, here's the way we would adjust that. We're going to click on these anchor points. There's only four of them. One with the Shift key, two three, four. I'm using the white arrow tool, the direct select tool. We've got only those four points selected. These three outer points are not selected. Then I can press E on my keyboard. That brings up the free transform tool, the everything tool. And it, you'll notice that it still puts the bounding box around the entire object. However, the only three points that are, four points that are selected are these four that belong to the stem. So if I now grab one of these edges and with my option key held down, I can scale this out or in, and you see it's only affecting those four points. This is the four points scaling in toward the center of the object. I do have the Option key held down, or the Alt key on the PC held down, and that's sort of, I can just eyeball it and figure out how I want to do it. All right, there you go. Uh, supposing I want to lengthen the stem of the arrow, I can just select these two bottom points here with the Direct Select tool, and I can either drag downward, making sure that, whoops, making sure that I've got the Shift key held down, like that. Wow, it's really just uh, selecting a whole bunch of random things here. And shift key held down and drag downward. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Alternatively, you can use the arrow keys in your keyboard for just a gentle little nudge. And if you need a bit more of a nudge, hold the shift key down at the same time that you're using the arrow keys in your keyboard to get larger increments. Okay, finally, we might want to adjust these corner points. This is going to be the hardest part of the process because well, for a number of reasons. For one thing, we want to make sure that whatever we do to one side, we're doing to the other side. And that, that way, we have a per still a perfectly lined shape. So I'm going to use the Shift key and select both of those points. And then once again, I can go to the Free Transform tool, the Everything tool. And uh, if I need to bring these points in or out, I can easily do that um, by just simply Option and then dragging them out or in, just to sort of get the angle that I'm looking for. Now, unfortunately, um, this will not help me line these up. I still want them to line up onto the path. And um, here's one slight limitation of Illustrator. So if I pop back out of that tool, and I'm just going to go with the free transform tool. They're both still selected. And whatever, if I click on one and I drag it down, bearing in mind that I've got a mouse that just is acting up, 
uh, with the shift key. As long as the shift key is held down, they will move together. That's great. Only problem being that they do not snap. And the reason for that is that Illustrator seems to be look, moving the center point. You can actually see a green line being drawn down from the center of this shape. Uh, so it's not actually going to snap until we get the center point actually touches the edge of the circle, which is really not what we're looking for. So moving these both at the same time isn't going to cut it for us in this particular instance. This is the only instance I can think of where you want to move these points individually. And the only reason it's okay to do that is because uh, even if we're moving them individually, we're still moving them to both to a common point. We're not going to move them left or right. So presumably if I move this point down to line up with the shift key held down to line up with the edge of the circle, if I move this point down to line up with the edge of the circle, see how it snaps, get the word intersect and it snaps, these should still be at the exact same height. So even though I didn't move them at the same time, they do snap to the same position. All right, that's basically it. And the next thing we want to do is we want to just sort of rotate this guy. Uh, I'm going to grab the rotate tool, option click at the anchor point, then I option click that with the rotate tool, angle of 45 degrees, press OK we're good to go. So now the only thing left for this infographic, because you really can't see that it's an arrow once it's deselected, is we need to sort of outline that path. One way of doing it, we'll look at a second way in the second tutorial, object, path, and then we're going to offset the path, and we're going to offset that path by half of 50. So these are all 50 points. 50 points, 50 points, 50 points. So we're going to offset that by half of that amount, which is 25 points. Let's take a look. Exactly. Now you'll notice that by offsetting it, that makes this miter go way out here. That's actually going to become problematic in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set that miter limit down to zero. And that basically says, so the miter limit is how far, how many times greater than the stroke width will Illustrator allow us to extend that point in order to be able to create a sharp point. And we said, well, we don't really want to allow it to extend any at all past the 25-point uh, width. So that just sets it to zero, and that creates more of a beveled uh, edge, so chamfer. So there we go. And that's it. So now we're going to set this guy to white. And these guys were grouped, so there it is. And there's your infographic. And the second part, we're going to look at a separate way of doing it, exactly the same results, just a slightly different approach uh, using strokes and the appearance palette.